What is going on everyone? Chris with Journos Comics and Pop Culture and I got another video looking at some hot key Marvel comics and we're going to see what they've done since these characters in these books have shown up in the MCU. We have four books to cover today. Before we get into this video though, please, if you aren't subscribed to the channel, take some time to do so. Check out all the awesome links below, including how you can become a patron member of the channel for only $3.99 a month, where you get all kinds of extra perks, including automatic entry into all my patron-only contests. You can also help support the channel by becoming a YouTube member for only $1.99 a month. There's perks there as well, and you also get extra entries into all my contests that I have on YouTube, and as of right now, my 5K subscriber contest is still running, everyone, so there's time to enter that. Briefly, I'm going to tell you again what you need to do, all right? Listen up. Really easy. One, subscribe to me here on Journals, Comics, and Pop Culture on my YouTube. If you have an Instagram, follow me at journals underscore comics. That link is below as well. If you don't have an Instagram, don't sweat it. But lastly, you also need to subscribe to our comic book canon YouTube. That link is below as well. And then to seal the deal, you just got to comment on any video of mine, any video, this video, a video that I did a week ago, a month ago. And all you need to say is I'm subscribed to you and comic book canon and boom, you are automatically entered into my 5k contest. If you sign up to be a channel member for only $1.99, you will get an extra entry into that contest. If you're a patron, you'll get even more extra entries. So enough with that. Before we get into the video though, of course, I got to give a big shout out to all of my awesome patrons via patreon.com. Here we go, Larry, Serge, Michelle, Jacob, Tyler, Keith, Jeremy, Sean, Michael, Comic Spunk, Jeff, Tricky Clicky, Philly Born, Alvin, Frankies, Fletch, Joshua, Pedro, Peter, Jason, Joe, Larissa, Soggy, Dan, Bichner, Simon. Man, the more I get, the, the longer that goes. But guys, thank you all so much. Last but not least, I know it's not A1 Wednesday, but I gotta give a big shout out to A1 Comics. As always, this is their schedule this week. Live sales on Wednesday and live sales on Friday on Instagram. Their information is below. I caught me a book uh, on last Wednesday's sale. I'm going to show that off in a video. Maybe my Friday Night Live this week. Really awesome X-Men book that I picked up. All right. I tortured you guys enough. Let's get into these books. All right. First book on the list. This is a fun one. One that I do not own. I hope to one day. Hulk is a run that I'm collecting. Hulk number 271, the first appearance of Rocket Raccoon. Wow. Rocket Raccoon. What an amazing job Marvel Studios have has done with this character. Bradley Cooper. When I'm reading comic books and Rocket's in it, I hear Bradley Cooper's voice in my head. It's absolutely amazing. All right, this is how we're going to break this down. If you've watched some of my recent videos uh, that are in this series, you'll probably understand, but I'm going to break it down to you of what we're going on here, okay? What you see here is pre-GOTG. That means pre-Guardians of the Galaxy film, right? We're going to look at what this book was doing. Fair market value, CGC 9.8, before the release of the movie. So for that, that's 2013. So let's look at that. Before the movie came out in 2013, this book had a fair market value and a CGC 9.8, sitting at around $405, all right? Now, the film came out in 2014. So post Guardians of the Galaxy release in that same grade, fair market value jumped to $633. What trend is that? That's a 56% increase. Pretty solid. I've said it about Guardians before, I'll say it again. Guardians was an amazing surprise by Marvel Studios. I never expected them to do a Guardians film and especially to do it as early as they did in the, the, the lifespan of the MCU and they blew it out of the water. So, uh, of course, these characters, a lot of people jumped on these characters really fast, all right? Now, what I did here is I, I listed a pre- COVID 2020 fair market value and a current fair market value tw for 2021. I did this because we, we know the market's booming right now, but also there's a lot of naysayers that think this is just a bubble. It's because people are blowing their stimulus money and all this. We're, I'm not even getting into that. The bottom line is we're, we're going to look at what this book was doing 
uh, pre-COVID and post-COVID, okay? Just for the sake of things. So let's look at what it was doing in 2020. Fair market value in that CGC 9.8 did drop from after the release. It was at $553. So look at this. It dropped 13% from where it was at after the release of the film. But it was still up 37% prior to the film's release. And I've said this before. I'll say it again. I'll say it over and over. I talk about thresholds. I say the majority of these books, once you see a movie come out and these books jump up and get hot, whatever, they may have ebb and flow, peaks and valleys, but there's going to be a threshold. You most likely will never be able to buy them and get them for what they were pre-MCU debut. And this goes to show you right here, even with a dip, this book was still 37% up from where it was at pre-Guardians of the Galaxy, all right? But look at this. This book absolutely has rebounded in the current market. So current fair market value is sitting at $918 now. This book has jumped hot this last year. So now it's up 45% from where it was at after the MCU debut of Guardians. And it's up 127% from pre-MCU debut of Guardians. So this book is absolutely hot right now. Um, like I said, this is one I hope to own one day. Uh, I might. I, I'm, it's not really on my radar. So who knows? I may have missed the boat on this one. We shall see. All right. We're talking Guardians here, guys. Do you see a theme? Huh? This is Marvel Super Heroes number 18. This is the first appearance of Guardians of the Galaxy. Now, keep in mind, uh, a, a much different team. Uh, than the overall feel of what we saw in, in, in the in the movie. But but let's look at the numbers anyways, okay? Pre-Guardians uh, released 2013. Now we're looking at a CGC 7.5 for this, okay? And, and and usually when I pick these these grades, I pick the ones with the most on the census, okay? $275 fair market value pre-release of Guardians, okay? Post-release, $366. That's a 33% upward trend. That's solid. That's solid. Now, Let's look at pre-COVID 2020 numbers. 387 fair market value. So look, it's holding its value. It's up a little bit. It's up a mere 6% from that post-release in 2014. And it's up a 41% from pre-film uh, release, right? Solid. But now, look at this. This is something that you're not seeing a lot of right now. But I'm going to tell you, for all those people that are like, everything's up right now because of COVID. It's a false bubble. Uh, again, stimulus, money, all this stuff, it's everything's up. That's not true. Look at this book. Current CGC 7.5 fair market value. It dipped down from last year. It's sitting at about $310. So what is that? That's 15% down from the post-release fair market value. But look, what do I talk about? I talk about thresholds. It's still up 13% from that pre-movie release. So Again, very interesting that this book is is uh, seeing a bit of a dip right now. Now, again, I, I can't speak to what that is. Uh, it could possibly be, you know, the fact that people are just looking at other books right now. We know that the Guardians have been delayed in the, you know, with uh, volume three being delayed for multiple years now. Or, you know, I mean, with the other characters' popu popularities, uh, you know, Star-Lord and Gamora and Rocket and, and whatnot and Drax. Maybe they're going after, you know, books that those actual characters are more prevalent in. You never really know. There's so many variables out there to, to the reason why these books trend. But look, I, I, I think, again, this is a book that I don't think we'll ever really see drop below that 2013 pre-Guardians fair market value. Over time, I think this book is going to continue to rise little by little. Uh, but I do feel that there's a lot of other books that are going to be looked at and picked up before this one. All right. All right. We're going to move on to the next book, and that is Strange Tales 180. And yes, I told you, there's a theme here. This is the first appearance of Gamora. Look at that. You guys know me. I love me some Warlock. I can't wait to see him full on in the MCU. But right now, we're talking about Gamora, guys. All right, we're looking at um, pre-Guardians. Now, here's the thing. There was nothing on the census for 2013 for this book in any grade that was available that I was looking at. 
So I can't tell you what it was doing before the release, all right? But I can tell you what it was doing after the, re the release. And it seems that people were catching on to this book and sending it into CGC once we saw the character in the MCU. $418, uh, 9.6 fair market value in 2014, right? So now what we're going to do, we're still going to look at what this book was doing 2020 pre-COVID. It was at about 655 fair market value. So that's an upward trend of a 57% increase from uh, the, the post-release of the film, right? Now let's look at the current fair market value. And again, this is this is another one. $551 currently, guys. This book's dipped as well. So what was I just saying about the 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 you know the other book of these characters that you know maybe they're looking for the characters that are actually more prevalent in the films? Here's a character that is prevalent in the films and just has been an amazing character, in my opinion. It's down 16% from last year. So again. Why is that? Maybe it has to do with delays in, in, in seeing these characters again. I absolutely don't know. I mean, we could we could see Gamora, uh, what, next year in, in Thor, Love and Thunder. I, I don't know. I don't have the answer for you. But look, this book is still up from, uh, and that trend number should be 2014, not 2013 there. But it's still up 32% from when the movie released. So again, thresholds. Uh, I, I don't see this this book dropping extremely low and again i always say this don't buy anything because i tell you to don't buy anything because you see it in a video on my channel buy it because you love it buy it because you want you made a sound decision to invest and you're willing to take the risk and and you can live with those decisions but with that being said it could possibly be a decent time to buy this book um if we're seeing it you know kind of stagnate or dip a little because I do think long term, this book is going to continue to increase. But again, that is merely my humble opinion, right? All right. All right, folks, we have one more book, just one more. And what is that book going to be? I actually don't remember. What is it? What is it? Oh, yes. <laughs> Marvel premiere number four, the first appearance of Star-Lord. All right. I know you guys see the red already. You see the red. Uh, again, we, we didn't have any numbers for uh, pre-Guardians, but post-Guardians, this book was, was a hefty one. $1,100. Wow. So, you know, with, without, that, without too many being on the market, that could have absolutely been a bloated number. And, you know, there are there is a term called market correction. Now, I think that term is used way too loosely. I think people that don't know too much about investing and finance use that term way too much. But but look, I mean, this could be uh, a bit of an outlier of a number because there just there wasn't too many out there. And through the years, as more books started being you know sent off to CGC and then sold on the secondary market, you know maybe folks said, okay, you know this book isn't really worth that much at least right now. Pre COVID twenty twenty. This book was sitting at about $825, so that's a 25% decrease from where it was at after the film's release, right? But look, again, everything increases during COVID. No, look at this. Right now, current 9.6 EGC fair market value dipped down to $706. That's a 14 dip from last year and a 36% decrease from the film's debut. What is going on here? What is going on? I think the MCU has done an amazing job with Star-Lord. They really created a, a fresh take on the character. They gave this character life that was not there before. Could that play a role in this book? Um, I mean, it, it absolutely could. But again, we're always... We're always in the what what what's the word I'm looking for? In the the state of not knowing, the state of unknown. We don't know what a var what variables could be affecting these books. So again, is it a good time to buy? Possibly because this book could absolutely increase. I think out of all the books. The four books that I showed right here, this one, in my humble opinion, is probably the most volatile, all right? 
Because I'm going to explain this. Let's look at Rocket and Gamora. All right. Hulk 271 in, in um, Strange Shells 180. These characters have, have, I think, done even more to revitalize what they are in the films. Maybe even more than Star-Lord. And I, I, Chris Pratt, I'm sorry. Uh, he's done an amazing job. I think he's great. But when you think fan favorites... I, I, if I had to do a poll, I might assume that those two characters would come out on top above Star-Lord. So you might want to take that into consideration. All right. So you just never know, though. Could this book see an upward trend in the near future? Absolutely. Because uh, the more these books age, the more possibility there is of that happening. But you never, never know. And I'm, I'm going to tell you one thing like this, though. As much as I love Guardians, Guardians Volume 1 is one of my favorite MCU films still. It's probably in my top five still, all right? Even with that being the case, even with me enjoying all those characters on screen and loving what Chris Pratt's done with this character, Star-Lord, it's not done me enough to want to spend $1,000 plus on this book. It's not done me enough to spend $825 on this book in a 9.6. And quite honestly, it's not done enough for me to want to spend $706 on this book. I just don't see myself doing that. Maybe other collectors feel the same way. I don't know. But guess what, everyone? That's the last book. And I want to know what you guys think. I want to know what you think of the video. I want to know what you thought of the four books I had on the list and, and looking at the numbers and how they're doing in the market. But more specifically, I want to know what you guys think about this book. What is your fair market value price for this book in a graded CGC 9.6? Are you willing to spend where it's currently at right now, thinking that it might continue to go back up to hit that 800 or 1,000, 1,100 mark sometime in the near future? Or are you not even willing to spend that 700? I want to know what you guys think in the comment comments. So with that being said, everyone, that's the video for today. Thank you all so much for watching. I've been enjoying doing this video series where we're really looking at uh, trends from these books with these characters that have debuted in the MCU and and seeing if they continue to increase, take some dips and whatnot. I'll tell you, though, from watching all the videos, if you haven't yet, go back and watch them. Most of them have been doing extremely, extremely healthy. So, all right, everyone. Thank you again for watching. Be well. And until next time.